What up? Yeah, these are my bikes. I uh, originally had three of them, but I sold one. This one right here. Haven't got it, been able to get it run right. Haven't been able to get the jetting right. I don't know if it's an air leak or what, but I don't ride this bike too much because I can't get the jetting right. Yeah, on this bike, I'm currently running two front brakes. I got the disc setup and the V-brake. Now, this bike, if you're not careful, it will flip you. Just a stock back wheel. I'm getting ready to put this on. It's just a regular uh, single wall disc wheel with a 39 tooth Russian sprocket. I've actually... The only problem I've had with this is having the axle brake. Um, the wheels actually stay pretty true. Um, I bent it one time because I took a turn too sharp and it got bent and then I got trued back up but I keep on having axles break. Like, like you all know with free wheels because the axle is unsupported on the, the seven speed side. But yeah, once I get uh, M5 bolts for this, this one's going on this bike. This one right here is my daily commuter. Um, it's basically a stock engine with uh, has a G5 zone drawn on it. It's the steel sleeve, and it uh, it's also been jetted properly. Uh, I sanded it down the head. I mean the cylinder barrel because it's made for a 40 stroke a 40, I mean a 40 millimeter stroke and the Zeta is a 39.5 so I had to sand down the head a little bit and uh, for everyone that's uh, having chains break constantly I tried the 41 chain but all that did was sharpen my sprockets and I had to keep on replacing them. And then uh, I tried the 415H, but it didn't really sit right on the sprockets. So I went out and got the Regina 415 chain. I mean, you can get a chain for, what is it, $26, $28, 30 And I have not had any problems with my chain breaking at all. Yeah, it's the Regina 415 chain. It's nice and strong. Yeah, I highly recommend. Yeah, for all you guys that keep on having chain issues with your chain breaking act, I recommend getting the name brand 415 chain. Don't get the 41 chain or the 415H. You want a chain that sits right on the sprockets. Otherwise, it will wear your sprockets out quick. And I just recently got this back wheel. It's an uh, Alex rim with an 8 speed, 8, 9, 10 speed free hub. I plan on switching out the, uh, for a solid axle, the quick release with a solid axle. But I'm going to wait till it breaks. But I've been riding this wheel about probably a month and I haven't had the axle bend whatsoever. I mean, it's still nice and sturdy. It's a double wall rim, uh, 36 spokes, the 14 gauge spokes. Yeah, I was either going to get the Zac 19 rim, but uh, what I really wanted was the Sun Rhino light rim, but I ended up cheaping out and get the Alex rim. You can get one for like 60 bucks, but it's a free hub. The difference between a free hub and a free wheel is the rear axle is supported so it's actually stronger in order to switch the seven speed to a eight speed free hub you got to buy a four millimeter adapter i don't know if you can see that yeah it's right it sits right behind there and yeah, that's actually been running pretty good. 
Um, <laughs> another thing I did, I kept on having problems with my uh, derailleur keep going into the spokes and bending my rims and breaking them. Because once they, you know, the bike falls over, that derailleur gets all whacked and it bends the hanger right here. And it's really hard to get that line back up. But what I did was basically just turn into a single speed. You see that? Yeah, it's just a single speed now, and I like that a lot better. One less problem, you know. I've broken three wheels because of that derailleur going into the spokes. And I'm going to do the same thing on this bike, too. I'm going to switch it over to a free hub and just use this... Uh, this wheel right here as a spare um i recommend getting rid of that rag joint those things are junk they will destroy the wheels um yeah i highly recommend the russian sprocket i got a 39 tooth on this wheel and on this wheel over here is a 35 tooth but um yeah, the Russian sprocket's real easy. You just buy a rear disc wheel and it just bolts right up and you're done. You don't have to mess with trying to get the rear sprocket even. Uh, tighten each bolt down a little at a time to get it even. Um, see, another thing with the if you're a mountain bike guy like me is that our rear wheels are odd. They're like, because you can't get the, what is it? The CNC sprocket adapter, which just clamps on the hub. I mean, you can, but you got to have it special made because the rear hub, the inner dimension, it's, it'll be odd. It'll be like 1 in 1 1.3, 1.95, 1 1.5. And as you all know, you can only get uh, the 1 inch one or the 1.5. I mean, they buy adapters for like one and a quarter, but those are for more of uh, your beach cruiser bikes. But with the Russian sprocket, I mean, it's perfect for a mountain bike. So, yeah, I recommend getting rid of that. But, yeah, like I said, I this bike, I'm still trying to get some air, figure out what's going on. I just ordered some crank seals. Um, been wanting to sell. It's top end. It's a 47 millimeter iron sleeve cylinder. I won it, won it in the raffle a while back, and I haven't really used it too much. Um, I was running the OZ, and still couldn't get the jetting right, so I switched over to the the G2, and it has a little bit more torque. Like I said, I I think it has an air leak somewhere. I don't know. I've done. I've been trying for months to try to get this thing running. But yep, that's my bikes. And for your mountain bike guys, that's what you need to do: to get a rear disc wheel and get the Russian sprocket. Russian sprocket's like 50, 60 bucks, and you get. I paid 40 bucks for that wheel just to get me going on Google Express for 40 bucks with a 20% coupon code for first-time buyers. But like I said, with the free wheel, you're gonna be the axle's gonna bend because of the added weight and the speed that you're going on these things is just gonna keep bend that axle. So I recommend switching over to like a free hub and something double wall. You know. This is the cheapest option, the Alex rim, which is sixty bucks. Got that off of Amazon. But if you go to Google Express, it's the same price for 60 bucks, but you get the 20% off, so it's even cheaper. I mean, it's a good wheel. The reason why they're so cheap is because it's an older type of rim. They came out with newer rims, so that's basically why they're so cheap. It's a good, it's a good wheel, but there's just an older version. And like I said, in order to switch over to the a free hub to a 7-speed freewheel, just gotta buy that four millimeter adapter. It's 
it's only like five bucks. Then you gotta buy the cassette, that's like 12 bucks. And it just basically just slides on on. But yeah, this wheel is nice and strong. I've only had it about a month. And the axle hasn't bent yet, but once it breaks, I plan on switching out the quick release for a solid axle, which is real easy to do. Like this wheel right here, it had a quick release, and I switched it out to a solid axle. Real simple. Real simple. But yeah, what I, what I like most about this bike, though, is the dual front brakes. I would like to do it to this bike, but I need to find a... What is it? A fork that accepts both. This one only accepts disc. But yeah, it's really cool. That thing will stop on a dime. If you're not ca careful, it will flip you. Also, plan on getting a bigger. Uh, what is it called? Disc brake. A bigger one of these. That's 160 millimeter. The one on this one. It's 220. But yeah, those are my bikes.